Thank you very much for attending this webinar. Uh, all right, let me see if you're able to see me and hear me. I'm currently checking um yeah the question section feel free to throw me like a, just a message in the question section to tell me yes damien we are able to hear you and to see you and everything is going well with your setup so i will know that i'm able to continue uh all right everything's functional this is the first thing that i see from kailash gampat and Rav is also telling me that he's able to see me and to hear me. So this means a lot to me. It's a good thing. Setup is working well. All right. Let's uh, give it like a few minutes until some more people join. By the way, I'm standing. Uh, if you attended our live analysis session last time, you'll know that I got a standing desk. So now I'm standing. All right. So this is why I'm so I'm moving like to the left and to the right because I'm pretty much like like walking around in front of the camera, which is a good thing. All right, guys, uh, I'm saying hi to everyone. My name is Damian from forexball.com, and today I'm going to do a webinar for you uh, on Bollinger Bands, a very, very nice uh, volatility indicator, one of my favorites, by the way. Uh, all right, feel free to introduce yourself, to tell me where you guys are from, how is the weather, something that concerns you maybe about forex bolt i would love to answer all of your questions until some more people join that will be a pleasure for me all right in the meantime uh what do i have for you hmm. yeah we just scheduled today the next live analysis session and it's going to take place on friday uh 8 a.m new york time uh which if i'm not wrong responds to 1 p.m london time and eventually midnight Australian time, something like that. Uh, all right, so how are things going, guys? How are the courses? Do you enjoy our materials? I would love to get some feedback from you uh, until we wait a little bit more for some more people to join. That would be a great thing. Uh, also, I would like to remind you that this webinar is... Uh, being recorded, so it's going to get uploaded at our database at www.forexbolt.com slash webinars. You'll be able to find it over there and to watch it uh, as many times you want if you're on the trader membership plan. Okay. All right, great. Also, I would love to hear something about which Forex pairs are you guys trading. All right, more people are joining. Again, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Damian from forexvault.com. Uh, and today I'm gonna do a webinar on Bollinger Bands for you. Feel free to introduce yourself using the questions section, uh, as well as um, to tell me um, if you have any concerns about your membership. How do you like our courses? How do you take our courses? Do you have a plan of study? To share something uh, about uh, your experience uh, with forexvault.com. I would love to hear something. In the meantime, I'm going to open something. I'm going to open an economic calendar uh, to see if I am able to share some information with you. Oh, oops. All right. That was my browser. Sorry about that. This is how things happen when you're using like multiple monitors, normal stuff. Uh huh. All right. Uh, let me check that out. By the way, I've noticed that the euro dollar has been pretty bearish recently after the price like met the upper level of a, of a big channel. So maybe that would be something that interests you. So I'm going to pop up my chart real quick. Oh, ooh, and that's the Bollinger Band because I've been like preparing for my webinar. <laughs> All right, great. So... I'm just like taking a little bit more time again because I would like to to wait for a little bit more people to join uh, to start the webinar because probably some other people would like to not miss that webinar. So yeah, all right. Uh, okay, currently you are looking now at the daily chart of the euro dollar. 
All right. Take a look. On the monthly chart, we see the bounce from the channel and then the price is being bearish. Take a look. The trend got broken and the price is breaking level after level. So that's an interesting thing about the euro dollar because the euro dollar has raised a psychological support level of 1.17. Uh, by the way, like establishing, I think it did. No, maybe just a little bit, but almost like a, what's that? Like a six month low, eventually something like that with the euro dollar half year low, which is a big thing. Uh, hasn't been that low since one year. All right. This is what I wanted to tell you about the euro dollar real quick. So I suggest that we do not like uh, de delay this webinar anymore. Again, I would like to encourage you to tell me if you're able to see me and hear me. Oh, all right. I see something from Kailash. Hey, does convergence divergence have to come from consecutive, uh, consecutive highs and lows on the MACD or it's as long as you can identify a pattern? Uh, by the way, that's a good question, and honestly, I cannot give you an exact answer on this uh, because there are not like 100% certain rules on any indicator on forex trading. But if you manage to find uh, uh, some kind of correlation with previous events on the chart, maybe this is the way you should use the MACD indicator. Uh, for example, let's check that out with the euro dollar. Well, sometimes it could be consecutive, sometimes not. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it will work better if they are consecutive. However, if they're not consecutive, they're still like if you manage to find the pattern of increasing, increasing tops on the chart and decreasing tops of the MACD at the same time, same tops and bottoms that are like uh, correlated, then this should be tra uh, treated as a divergence, in my opinion, as well. But uh, consecutives are most likely to work better, in my opinion. Take a look. Here, for example, this bottom with this bottom and this bottom with this bottom. So you have increasing bottoms here and decreasing bottoms here. And there you go. Divergence. Price increases afterward. Uh, Carlos asks something. Any idea of how to beat brokers? I am a new trader and the more I'm learning, the more I realize brokers are out, of, out to get you. What time frames do you recommend trading? Well, it depends what you're trading. I mean, uh, if you're a day trader, maybe it will be better if you trade like uh, smaller time frames, like maximum the, the hourly chart. If you're a swing trader, maybe you can like use also the daily chart, the, the 30 minute chart, the four hour chart, the one hour chart. But uh, if you're like a position trader, then the big charts are what interests you. But this strongly depends on your strategy. There is no best chart for trading, in my opinion. Uh, and about the brokers, you're totally right. That is correct. A lot of brokers are out there to get you. So you should be very, very careful when doing your research with your broker. And the reason for this is that many brokers are scam and they're out of out there to profit from your misfortune. Uh, you should make sure that the broker you're trading with is not profiting from your misfortune. And even if that broker does profit from the misfortune of the trader, uh, you should make sure that even in that case, the broker will uh like uh will like pay you back in case you will generate any problems so this is how i can answer to carlos about this question all right guys so now i'm going to drop down my chart uh and now you're supposed to see our forex bolt logo again uh i'm gonna turn off my camera now i'm disappearing there you go people are not able to see me anymore you're only left with my voice uh, and I'm going to switch to our disclaimer real quick. And I would like to encourage you to spend like uh, a minute to go through our disclaimer. So you will see that Forex Vault P2I Limited is a fully regulated company uh, financially and legally. And we hold an Australian license for general advice as a corporate authorized representative. Uh, so make sure you go through this disclaimer. Uh, and in the meantime, you will like keep staying with me with my voice <laughs> and I'm going to keep talking to you. Uh, let me see if I'm able to like go more in details with Carlos question because it's a good question. Uh, he also said that the more he's learning, the he's a new trader and the more he's learning, the more he realizes broker are out there to get you. Uh, well, about how to be Brokers, I mean, uh, if the broker is scam, if I have to be honest, it's very hard to beat that broker because if the broker refuses to pay you out, 
then you will need to pursue your rights uh, legally. Uh, but if the broker is located in an offshore zone, for example, that could be extremely hard. So uh, I am really honest with you when saying that you need to do a careful research when choosing your broker. What I can recommend you to do, guys, uh, we have a nice broker review on our website. It's located at www.forexbolt.com slash brokers. And we've created a very nice broker review over there. If you want, you can read it and see, for example, what are the, the, the features that you need to look for when like choosing your broker successfully. All right. Now I'm going to switch to our uh, webinar and the essence of the topic about the Bollinger Bands. All right. So here it is. Bollinger Bands and the power of volatility. This is how I decided to name that webinar because volatility can be powerful indeed. And if you know how to use like a nice volatility indicator, like the Bollinger Bands, uh, then this might result in a nice, uh, you know, <laughs> nice uh, trading outcome for you guys. So this is why I decided to spend the whole webinar session on the Bollinger Bands. All right, so now let's move on to the plan of our uh, webinar. So what is going to be covered in this webinar? All right, so we're going to start with what is volatility in Forex trading? I'm going to give you some like um, some descriptive information about volatility so we can create then a smooth transition to the Bollinger Bands indicator. Some stuff, some like, you know, brief stuff about its history. Uh, and what is it about? What is it formed from? Then we're going to move to the structure of the Bollinger Bands indicator, uh, its components, the bands, the middle line, the two zones of the indicator. And then we're going to switch to the most important signals of the Bollinger Band indicator, like the expansions, the contractions, the overbought, oversold uh, signals as well as when the price is hitting the upper band or the lower band, what does this mean, and so on and so forth. Then we're going to do some practical examples on a real chart. I will simply like pop up my chart and I will uh, like uh, browse through a Forex pair on like on your by your choice. You know, you're going to mention it in the questions. I will simply plot the Bollinger Bands indicator and uh, I will try to find some of the signals that I described uh, in the webinar session, which is likely to help you when, for example, you're choosing your uh, maybe your strategy, you like some of the signals, some may apply to your current strategy, you can like adapt them somehow eventually to another indicator and so on and so forth. And at the end, we are going to finish with a questions and answers section. And I will ask you to complete a simple poll about how satisfied are you guys from this webinar standard stuff as <laughs> in every webinar that i am creating guys and i hope you enjoy this i uh, see fabio uh G Ciomo or kiomo or como joined us sorry if i'm not pronouncing your uh, last name the right way uh he says hi damian i say hi to you as well we are just starting so you joined right on time uh for this webinar all right now let's move on what is volatility uh, in general and in forex trading as well. So the most important thing to know is that volatility is a statistical variation of price series over the time. The other thing that you need to know is that, uh, you know, volatility could be applied to any asset that could be measured in price. So any asset that could be measured in price, statistical variation of price. What does this mean? It means that uh, volatility measures the size of the price changes related to a like specific certain asset uh, over a specific uh, time period. So volatility is being measured by standard deviations, uh, which means that uh, since the standard deviations are like uh, based uh, on uh, uh, on deviations from the mean of a price over a certain like periods in the past it kind of can have some lagging uh, character you know uh all right so high volatility equals intensive fluctuations 
related to the certain asset that you're approaching. And low volatility equals quietness of the market. You know, I mean, when the volatility is high, for example, you're looking at the standard for extreme chart. When the volatility is high, this means that price, uh, you know, opens at a certain, you know, at a certain level and then closes relatively away from that level, creating big bars. These bars could be bearish, bullish. This doesn't matter for volatility because volatility measures intensiveness of the price action. And eventually this is like visualized on your chart by the candles you're looking for. For example, now uh, I'm going to give you an example now uh, about the volatility and the trend relationship sometimes because this is like uh, the purpose <laughs> of, uh, of this webinar, the Bollinger Bands indicator relation to volatility and relation to how to catch trends. So I'm going to do something like giving you an example now uh, about the volatility trend relationship. And I am now showing you an example of a chart. This is the five minute chart of the British pound, uh, American dollar for pair for May 18, which is like, uh, uh, what's that? Friday, <laughs> three days ago. Yeah, exactly. So. The indicator that I see in the bottom is the ATR, average true range indicator. Uh, so the average true range indicator is also another volatility based indicator. It's like a very simple to understand. This is why I placed it. So whenever the, <laughs> the indicator is high, this means that the price is, uh, is volatile. Whenever it's low, the price is quiet. So what do you see over here? Take a look. So these yellow arrows, I plotted them over there to show you a state when the market is flat, candles are relatively small, as you see. And at the same time, the average true range indicator is also very low. This means that, uh, I mean, since the average true range indicator is showing you like low levels, this means that the bars on the chart are pretty small. And this is very likely to be a quiet market situation when the Forex pair is not trending. And this is exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing flat market at the upper yellow arrow. But what happens next? That's what happens next. The ATR starts increasing because candles start expanding, right? They start opening, uh, 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 for example, at the beginning we have an increase uh, over here, then we have a decrease, another increase, and then the price enters like a big trend. So at the beginning, volatility starts expanding step by step, meaning that the ATR indicator is also decreasing. Uh, which leads to a big downtrend. So this is how volatility and trends could be related uh, uh, in uh, Forex trading. But now let's get back to the, the real topic why we're here. I just used like the HR indicator to show you that relationship between volatility and trends. Now let's get back to the essence of this webinar. And uh, that would be uh, what is Bollinger Bands indicator. All right. So. The Bollinger Bands indicator is a non-chart indicator, uh, which, like when plotted on the chart, uh, it consists of three lines. So basically, this is a plotted three line indicator that you can place on your chart. So the, the, the indicator, the Bollinger Bands indicator, was developed by John Bollinger, uh, who is that guy over here that I placed on my presentation. And the indicator was developed in 1980. However, later on, when uh, maybe when John Bollinger realized that this indicator provokes like a big dose of interest, he decided to trademark it in 2011. And this information I got from Wikipedia about the history of the Bollinger Bands indicator. And now let's get back to the serious stuff. All right. So the important thing that you need to know is that the Bollinger Bands indicator is volatility based indicator as we discussed volatility like in a few slides uh, ago. So the indicator uses standard deviations and gives signals related to volatility. The indicator, as I said, is plotted on your chart and it consists of three main components, couple bands, upper band, lower band and a middle line. Another very important thing is that every MetaTrader 4 platform has the Bollinger Bands indicator built in. So you can simply go to, you can simply like go to your MetaTrader 4 platform, open it. You can then go to 
uh, I think uh, indicators, uh, then you go to trend indicators and then you go to Bollinger Bands and it, you click OK and splash, it is like apply to your chart. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, and now I am going to, uh, to meet you with the structure of the Bollinger Bands indicator. All right. So this is how it looks like on this small image over here. Upper band, lower band, middle line. So there are two bands, the upper and the lower bands, based on standard uh, deviations on the chart. The upper and the lower band. The middle line is just a standard 20 period simple moving average. I mean, uh, you can always uh, customize your Bollinger Band indicator if you're not able to do it like from your platform. Uh, maybe you can code it uh, as a custom indicator and so on and so forth. But basically, these are the standard parameters. The two standard deviations, the upper and the lower, the 20 period moving average in the middle. So this creates two channels on the chart, right? The upper channel, which consists of the upper band and the 20 period moving average and the lower channel, which consists of the 20 period moving average and the lower band. And these channels are the upper channel is called a buy channel and the lower channel is called a sell channel. And now I am going to give you a visual, uh, like a, a visual interpretation of the Bollinger Band structure. There you go. That's again, another standard chart uh, of the British pound, American dollar for its pair. Uh, which has the Bollinger Bands indicator plotted on. So this is the upper band, which is pointed by this hour arrow. Then you see the lower band over here. And at the middle, you see the 20 period moving average. So as you see, the price pretty much fluctuates between uh, like uh, fluctuates in the buy area and the sell area of the indicator, hitting the upper band, then hitting the lower band. Uh, and uh, so on and so forth. This is how this indicator actually works. And now I am going to tell you about the signals of the Bollinger Bands indicator. All right. So the first signal that I would like to tell you about is when the Bollinger Bands indicator, I mean, when the Bollinger Bands are actually expanding. This is called Bollinger Band expansion. You know, when the bands are narrow and suddenly they like gain distance from each other, this is when the bands are expanded. And this signalizes loud market and high volatility. The second signal are the band contractions. Uh, when the two bands are close to each other, the bands are tight. This happens when the volatility uh, with the respective assets is like low. Uh, and um, this is likely to be showing you that the market is quiet and this is pretty frequently associated with like uh, say corrections or consolidations uh, or some other uh, ranging uh, price uh, price activity another signal is when the the price action is hitting the upper band of the bollinger bands indicator so this is like a tricky signal. Uh, and the reason for this is that uh, there is no like certain, <laughs> uh, there is no certain indication about what exactly is happening when the, the price is hitting either the upper or the lower band. So what I can tell you is that you, you should like carefully observe uh, like the price's behavior and the Bollinger Band indicator, because sometimes when the price is hitting a band, if he's going like strongly above that band, uh, this might mean that the price is like extremely volatile and it is like uh, extreme increasing sharply. But at the same time, it could also be an overbought or an oversold signal. So depending on the different market conditions, this could have a different meaning. And also sometimes when the price uh, is like, for example, uh, Let's say the band start expand and the price hits the upper band, but sometimes the price can return from the, uh, the upper band and act as a the upper band can act as a resistance. And the reason for this is that maybe the price is not that volatile because actually this is what happens when the bands are tight. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you can, you might think that the bands are like expanded, but they can be pretty tight indeed. 
and the upper and the lower level of the Bollinger Band indicator uh, could actually act as a support and resistance level. I know that this sounds confusing. I got confused myself as well, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to explain it to you uh, in the more uh, in the most relevant uh, possible way. Uh, I mean, if, if you if you do not identify, for example, a proper band widening, you might get trapped in one of the Bollinger Bands level to act as a support or as a resistance and to change prices direction. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Another signal, which is like standard, it's not that much related to the Bollinger Bands indicator, is the uh, simple moving average crossover that you're going to get constantly. Because uh, imagine if you just plot a standard 20 period moving average on the chart. So every crossover of the price with the moving average will give you some kind of a signal. So this acts absolutely the same way with the Bollinger Band. So basically, the Bollinger Bands uh, consist of the upper and the lower band. And the simple moving average is just an addition to that indicator that is considered part of the Bollinger Band. All right, so these could be bullish crossovers and bearish crossovers, depending on which direction the price goes. Um, all right, the other signal that the Bollinger Band indicator can give you is when the price action is overbought or oversold, as I said it like in the previous signals. Uh, so what does this mean, overbought and oversold? I mean, since we only have like a <laughs> couple bands and a moving average, how are we identifying overbought and oversold signals? Very easy. This happens when you see the band to get expanded like very, very much. I mean, when the price sharply creates like an ex uh, when the band sharply creates an expansion you know like the two bands start expanding very quick in in the past you had like a like a squeeze a narrow band movement but suddenly they start expanding real quick and then you should check the direction of the price move which will i uh, eventually uh give you an in like identification if uh if the if the bands are like uh, if the price action is overbought and oversold, so extremely wide bands with a big bullish candle is giving you an overbought signal. Extremely wide bands with a bearish candle is giving you an oversold signal. Uh, so what are these signals actually mean? They mean that I mean when you see like expanding bands with big bullish candle, this is considered as uh, say something like a price anomaly you know when the price sharply moves in some direction for example in bullish direction uh and then when things get back to normal it is likely that the price say enters like a small steady trend and get back to normal gets back to normal this is likely to happen during the release during releases of economic data for example you have some very very important uh, announcement coming in your economic calendar which is likely to cause very high volatility why so because uh, during economic events a lot of people are trying like to make something out of the market and a lot of people like jump in the market trying to trade some events so market gets crazy <laughs> uh so due to high trading volumes volatility increases because a lot of people are like um uh, uh, like um uh, you know, entering the market or covering their trades or whatever, which leads to that like uh, high volume of trades implemented with this respective asset. This makes the price fluctuate, which means that the volatility of this certain financial asset, Forex pair, for example, is very, very high. So basically, this is how the Bollinger Band indicator acts band expansions. Band contractions, you know, contraction symbolizes like ranging market, expansions symbolizes loud market, meaning that the price is very likely to enter a trend eventually when the price is hitting the upper band and increases, when the price is hitting the upper band and bounces from it as a resistance, when the price is hitting the lower band and decreases trends in various directions, or when the price is hitting the lower band uh, during like more quiet market and the Bollinger Band indicator acts as, you know, the lower band acts as a support. At the same time, you can also rely on simple moving average crossovers because you have a 20 period moving average plotted at the middle of the Bollinger Band indicator, which is likely to give you bullish 
and bearish crossover signals. At the same time, overbought, oversold signals when you get a price anomaly and then the price might return back to normal, you know, because this is how it is traded. All right, now I am going to give you some examples related with, uh, with I mean, some examples of the Bollinger Band indicator uh, during uh, quiet market and during cloud market. Take a look at this. So we're currently looking at a 15 minute chart of the euro dollar forex pair. And we have plotted a Bollinger Band indicator on this chart. So what do you see at first sight? Uh, by the way, when you're looking at the chart, I would like to remind you that uh, you can ask me any type of questions all the time during the webinar. Feel free to use the question section. Simply ping me, ask me a question, and I would love to. I would love to answer your question. Also, if I, uh, if uh, if you believe that you can add up something to what I'm saying, I would love to hear it as well. So uh, this could also be a benefit for our webinar. All right. So what are you seeing on the chart? Take a look at this. Here we have narrow bands, some kind of a squeeze. And the market is quiet here. This is why I have indicated this as shh, quiet. The market is quiet here, you know, it's it doesn't want to be disturbed. Suddenly, what happens? The price starts trending in bearish direction. The two bands start expanding right after the market being quiet and the price starts hitting the lower band trending in various direction take a look the market is loud over here then the bands turn out to be close to each other again narrow which means that we are getting another squeeze right take a look again quiet the market is sleeping you know and this might not be the best trading opportunity for you because the market is pretty quiet. And then what happens? The market turns out to be loud again. The, uh, the price action starts like slicing through the upper band, increasing and increases a lot. There you go. However, I would like you to pay attention over here at the like the first market state when the market is loud do you see that big bullish candle over here notice that this bullish candle this big bullish candle happens during extremely wide bands take a look and then the price creates some kind of substantial increase and then the price bounces from the upper bound and starts decreasing this is in my opinion also another signal and this could be interpreted as like an overbought price signal because this big candle on what is that 10th of january i think <laughs> uh is probably caused by an economic event eventually yeah because it happens when does this happen uh maybe it is related to an economic event uh from the european union notice the price like shoots up sharply shoots up bands expand of course because this is like an extremely high volatility uh like not uh uh which is not normal having in mind the previous price action and then the price starts like uh slows down the increase a bit test the upper band as a resistance and bounce from it uh, in bearish direction. And this is when the Bollinger Band indicator gives you an over, overbought signal. It gives you an overbought signal when the price is like unusually high and then the price enters a bearish trend and gets back to normal like step by step. So basically this is how you will need to interpret uh, like the most important signal of the Bollinger Band indicator when the bands are like expanding and contracting and you will need to you will need to learn how to shuffle between these two signals and to um, and to recognize them in a, in a good way. Because if you if you do not recognize uh, 
price expansion, uh, not price expansion, but bands expansion, then you can miss a nice trading opportunity on the chart. If you don't recognize a like a Bollinger Band squeeze or price or Bollinger Band contraction, then you might forget to exit the market at the at the right moment. So this is how the Bollinger Band indicator works. So guys, I would like to encourage you now to suggest a forex pair that you would like me to go to. Uh, and I would love to plot the Bollinger Band indicator over there and to uh, and to try and discover some of the signals that we discussed. The band expansion, the band contraction, the when the price is hitting the upper band, the lower band, some crossovers and some overbought and oversold signals. So feel free to suggest a forex pair. And I'm currently browsing through the euro dollar, or maybe I can simply like, uh, what can I do? I can do the, all right, let's do the, the euro Swiss franc forex pair. I'm going to place the Bollinger band indicator over here. Take a look. I'm going to insert indicators, trend, Bollinger bands, and you can like customize uh, customize the color, the period, the deviation, and so on and so forth. All right, now we have the Bollinger band indicator over here. Uh, all right, let's move that that level. And I'm gonna switch to let's do a 15 minute chart. All right, great. So take a look at this. This is, by the way, another example that I wanted to mention. When the bands are expanding, however, the price action is unable to get a trend. This is when the bulls and the bears are pretty equal. You know, take a look. We have a squeeze over here, then bands expand, price starts hitting the upper band, but no substantial trend appears on the chart. Then we see another squeeze over here. I'm going to zoom in the chart. Take a look. We see another squeeze and suddenly bands start to expand over here. We have one bearish candle. We have another bearish candle. We have third, uh, fourth bearish candle. Price obviously starts hitting the lower band. And notice that the bands are expanding. So this is definitely not a quiet market. This is a loud market and the price is hitting the lower band, meaning that the volatility is very high and the price attempts to enter a bearish trend. So this is how it works. Price starts decreasing, 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 decreasing. Suddenly the price gets again the upper band and the correction is relatively big over here. The price crosses the 20 period moving average in bullish direction, which gives us an opposite signal that the market probably gets quiet again. And this is exactly what happens. Take a look. Market gets quiet, bands get narrow. And what happens when the bands are narrow? See, price bounces from the lower band increases to the upper band then price bounces to the lower band again and what happens big sharp candles and bands are extremely expanded unusually expanded the two bands take a look so why is this probably because the market is oversold so notice that we have price drop but we cannot say that this is a trend we have a price drop and the price suddenly creates a pullback and the lower band acts as a support only to send the price back to the upper band. Interesting, right? All right, now let's scroll back again to see if we're able to find something even more interesting. All right, uh, let's do, let's zoom in here, see how things are going. So, so what happens over here? Notice that market is kind of inconsistent over here. We have price increases and price decreases, but for example, let's start over here. Bands are expanding. However, we have some like a pattern over here, eventually a symmetrical triangle pattern, which means that a low volatility is very high. The price is still consolidating because no substantial trend is created. Suddenly, this triangle is broken in bearish direction. And when this happens, the two bands start expanding. Notice that the expansion is not that big, meaning that the volatility is not that high. Then suddenly, we have a breakout over here. The price returns again to the lower band, 
creates a spinning bottom candle and then it increases again breaking g 20 period moving average going in the in the buy zone of the bollinger band indicator but again bands are not that wide so the market is not very consistent over here take a look then the price uh the bollinger bands have squeezed again price returns again to the lower level of the band another squeeze over here so this is kind of uh like a moment of inconsistency for the bollinger band indicator again another run but if you try to trade all of these for example if you buy here then when the price increases you may be forced to sell somewhere over here so how how much is this like seven pips when you put the spread of the euro swiss franc for spread, that might not be enough for your trade right then again another squeeze however we have something interesting over here take a look After this bearish move, price bounces in bullish direction, breaks the 20 period moving average, starts hitting the upper band. The bands like start expanding like in a normal way here. And then the price starts moving sideways, which is interpreted as a squeeze. Take a look at the squeeze. And what does this squeeze resemble to you? Do you remember this chart pattern? Exactly. This is something like a double top, but you can recognize it on the Bollinger Band indicator. Uh, oops, what did I do? Did I just... I think I lost my... Aha, uh -huh, here it is. All right. All right, I see a comment from... Uh, from uh, Andre Arias. He says, hello. So we must close the trade when the candles cross the ME or when the upper and the lower bands come together, uh, whichever happens first. Well, uh, to be honest, the two bands will never come together <laughs> because they are like the upper and the lower. Uh, they're like upper and lower band. They will not come together. They will get close to each other. But uh, yeah, both of these signals could help you to close your trade. I mean, when the price crosses a, a simple moving average, this is a, this is a standard like a trend signal, you know, because we probably all of you know how to to get use of a moving average indicators. The more technical thing is to recognize when the market gets quiet or when you have squeeze. Because take a look at this example: the market is loud over here. Then you recognize that the bands start coming together here. First, this is a big distance take a look this is a big distance again here this is not a small distance again i mean this cannot be compared to this like vertical distance between the two bands but uh but still it is a big distance and when, when the two bands get squeezed they get squeezed over here take a look so this might be a good time to close somewhere somewhere over here somewhere between these candles let me zoom in the chart Maybe somewhere over here, it will be like the best if you manage to close over here. Because if you wait for the MAC, uh, for the for the moving average crossover, then you will close relatively lower because you have entered, um, say, over here on this bullish candle, and then you close over here. That's a big distance. So maybe it will be best if you close somewhere over here. That is a good thing, but you need to be flexible in terms of your signals. It's not necessary to use only one signal. Well, only except if you're planning to program a robot related to this indicator where you need to say black and white, which signal you want to use for like for closing your trade. But notice that right after the squeeze, because this is how the squeezes work, price increases, then we see a squeeze and then the price like becomes volatile again. Right after the squeeze, uh, the price changes its direction. It creates a big bearish candle, slices through the lower band. Notice that the expansion between the bands is like uh, big again, but it is smooth. I mean, it it might not be on uh, like uh, an oversold uh, an overbought an oversold signal. Why is that? Because the like the the transition is like a little bit smooth, not like in this case. Uh, did I miss it? Yeah, not like in this case. In this case, it's like kind of there is some kind of a 
big angle over here. And here the transition is like, uh, I feel it like more smooth, you know, because you have a correction, you have like the, the consolidation and the price shoots down. And suddenly after the price increase, here you have the opportunity for an early exit. Why so? Because you have a big, big reversal candle over here. And this is the spinning, uh, actually not a spinning bottom. This is like a pure dodgy candle. And you can use this candle to, to close your trade earlier. Otherwise, uh, take a look. The price bounces, increases to the, to the moving average. And then after like some period of time, it breaks it over here and over here. But uh, you need to be flexible between price action and indicator trading. Uh, because sometimes uh, different uh, approaches give you different signals, early exits, and so on and so forth. But take a look at this. These are like sharp candles. Price is shooting down through the lower band. Create some kind of a trend. Then we have another horizontal price move. Then the price, like, take a look. Here is very interesting because we have another, like, smoother squeeze. Band start increasing, and the price hits the upper band. However, the candles have, like, very, very big, candle bodies, uh, very, very big candle wicks, meaning that the bears and the bulls are fighting. At the same time, the price creates horizontal move. So what does this mean? Volatility is high and there is no trend, right? Suddenly, there is like a shooting star candle pattern over here. The price enters the sell zone of the Bollinger Band indicator and start decreasing. I mean, this decrease is still not that big, but uh, you may be able to get out something uh, to get something out of it. Uh, I mean, after all, we cannot only we cannot only trade big trend, right? So then the price bounces again from the lower band, breaks the the twenty period moving average, starts hitting the upper band. Notice the band uh, like uh, gradually start expanding, which uh, reminds of a trend. Take a look, and then we get another horizontal move right over here. Horizontal move, bands get tight, bands get narrow. Then another like bearish move, another bullish move, another tight move, and so on and so forth. Uh, did I miss some of the signals? Hitting the upper band, hitting the lower band. Uh, what I wanted to show you is when the bands are, uh, I wanna get an example when the bands are quiet for relatively you know when the bands are like uh narrow uh for a relatively long period of time i think this will work take a look at this so bands get narrow price starts moving horizontally take a look and the price hits the upper band goes back to the lower band increases to the upper band again to the lower band then shoots in bullish direction hits the upper band however the two bands start expanding so this is when you need to distinguish the price's behavior uh, in the squeeze and in the expansion. Because during the expansion, we again, we have another price move to the upper band. However, this time the bands expand. Take a look here. However, when the price was hitting, uh, for example, the price action was hitting the upper band here, there was no expansion over here. So this is the difference between the two. Uh, when bands are narrow, they act as supportive resistance. When bands are expanding, they act as a, like an accelerator of, of a trend, maybe. When the bands are expanding too much, <laughs> then this might be an overball condition. And you might see a reversal. Take a look. Another narrow situation. Price runs to the upper level of the band. Volatility is very high, but just for a single period. Probably some economic event. Then we have hits to the lower level upper level again the upper level another run to the lower level bounce from the lower level bounce from the upper level bounce again from the over from the lower level this is how the squeeze acts notice that here the bands start expanding however not enough and then we have like a substantial increase of volatility band start uh, price starts hitting the upper band however like bands are too expanded which is definitely something like an overbought market condition then Price gradually returns back to normal. The horizontal move continues. Uh, take a look. The horizontal move continues. We have a slight trend, but not that much. Uh, the real thing comes here, which can lure you into a losing trade, by the way, because if you like open here, you will see that the bands are expanding pretty sharply. However, then they 
get back uh, a little bit closer to each other. Price like changes its direction, then the bands expand again. And there is like bearish trend over here. Then we see another trend that is bigger. So we see an impulse, expansion in bands, squeeze, impulse, again, expand, expansion in bands, another squeeze over here. Then another bullish impulse, expansion in, ba in bands, and then another squeeze comes here. And then we have another expansion of bands, but this is like this time it's a bearish trend, the price is hitting the lower level. So basically this is how you can interpret the Bollinger Band Indicator. And uh, by the way, Bollinger Band Indicator is not a bad standalone tool. You can all, you can like, for example, base your strategy only on this indicator. If you, if you believe uh, and if you're trained to use it in like, a, uh, to use it well, then this might be the right tool for you. And the good thing is that uh, it uses volatility. And in my opinion, volatility never lies because when the, a forex pair is volatile this means that there is a lot of action on the market and whenever it's action this means that buyers and sellers are like fighting for dominance right and since the goal of both sides the buyers and the sellers is to win then there is a big chance that some of these two sides win and then the price enters a trend this is why i like the bollinger band indicator guys so now i am going to uh, pop up my presentation again. Uh, just give me a sec. There you go. Uh, and I'm switching to questions and answers uh, section. And I would like to encourage you guys, if you have any questions regarding what I just said, feel free to write it uh, in the question section. Uh, also, if you have any questions regarding the academy or whatever, simply just uh, plot it over here. I would love to answer all of your questions, guys. In the meantime, I'm going to launch a poll about how satisfied are you from this webinar, uh, where you uh, you will be able to vote uh, from one to five, when one, where one is bad and five is good, because we would like to measure performance. All right. In the meantime, I'm reading your questions. Can you recommend indicators to be used? Uh, is what Kailash is asking. Well, I just <laughs> like I just created a webinar about the Bollinger Band indicator. I mean, uh, in my opinion, it's a decent indicator. Or you're asking about an indicator uh, in combination. Aside from a visual measure, how can we quantify uh, measure uh, standard deviation? For uh, all right, I, I got a little bit lost between the two questions. Just give me a second. All right, Fabio is also. Uh, is also asking another question. Uh, all right. Uh, again, I would like to encourage you to vote uh, uh, to vote in the poll. From one to five. About this. All right, let's start over again. Uh, can you recommend ind indicators to be used? Uh, uh, Kailash, I would like to ask you, are you talking about like another indicator that you can use in combination with the Bollinger Bands? Uh, all right, that's a good thing. Uh, so now let me start, let me just uh, close the poll. I just close it. So you see questions and answers again. All right, what other indicators can be used with the Bollinger Band indicator? Uh, well, uh, hmm. Maybe uh, if you're able to, uh, for example, I really like the, uh, the, the volume indicator because uh, when, uh, when, you can, when you can confirm that volumes are like uh, relatively high, then there is like a bigger chance that the signal given from the Bollinger Band indicator is like more accurate. Uh, the problem with the volumes though is that uh, uh, in... For example, on the MetaTrader form platform, as far as I know, they cannot be measured accurately because uh, vol the volume data that is given to you is provided only by the uh, internal trading of uh, the, the traders that use that particular broker and not global. That's like a, a disadvantage. But on the other hand, uh, if your broker is like relatively big and has like a huge database of clients, maybe that could be something like a 
you know, it can give you a hint of eventually if there are a lot of trading uh, related to a particular situation. I mean, you will not be able to track the billions, you know, <laughs> in which direction the billions are going, but you will be able to catch the overall market uh, sentiment. Uh, what else uh, you can use with the Bollinger Band indicator? Maybe uh, you can confirm, uh, a, maybe you can confirm like volatility signals uh, with the ATR indicator, average true range, the one that I showed in the beginning, because both indicators are like uh, volatility based, and uh, and in my opinion, they will be in a good correlation between uh, uh, between e each other. So I hope that my uh, answer here. Uh, my answer here was uh, was uh, like uh, good for you. Uh, feel free to ask me again if you, if you need something uh, else. We'll have to try them out. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now let's uh, move to the other questions. Uh, all right. Aside from a visual measure, how we quantify measure uh, standard deviation? All right. Uh, so this is a little bit more tricky question because it's uh, it relates uh, statistics. Uh, uh, because the because the the standard deviation is a statistical uh, is a statistical uh, measurement. So what it does is like I believe, as far as I know, it takes the mean of the price action uh for a certain period of time whatever you configure it for example it takes the mean from this uh from uh from these periods and then uh it measures the deviation from that mean so this is how uh this is how it works so basically uh this is why it's called standard deviation because it is simply a standard deviation from the from the prices mean over a certain uh period uh, of time so whatever periods you would like to use, this is how you 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 can measure it. I mean, you can you can customize your own <coughs> you can customize your own standard deviation standard deviation too by simply like calculating the mean of the price action over a certain period of time and then plotting a deviation rule. This is how I uh, uh, how I understand this. I hope this is uh, helpful. Uh, then Fabio asks, why don't uh, why don't you use percentage B and bandwidth? Uh, Fabio, could you please like give me uh, some more explanations about the question you have? Because I'm not sure I understand it. I hope Fabio is still here and will help me. Uh, probably, uh, probably Fabio. Uh, probably Fabio is uh, asking about. Uh, all right, Fabio says again, statistical science. There are a lot of model for forecast and predict volatility, but does it? Possible with Bollinger Bands, try to predict volatility for next period. Oh, uh, I would I would say no here. I would say no, and the reason for this is that the Bollinger Band indicator also relies on since it's standard deviation based, it it, it relies on past data. So I, I'm not it it's not a uh, in my opinion it's not a leading indicator. So I would answer here no. Uh, Andres says here uh, in pip. Uh, Andre, can you please uh, specify what do you mean in pips? And then Fabio says, is there indicators from Bollinger Band formulas? <laughs> well, uh, um, I'm not exactly sure, Fabio, what you're asking here. Uh, what do you mean indicators from Bollinger Band's uh, formula? I mean, uh, uh, probably you're asking about something more advanced because I saw that you were asking uh, uh, about percentage B and bandwidth. 
I believe this could be customized. For example, uh, if you don't like the bands, <coughs> if you if you don't like uh, if you don't like the bands, eventually you can customize something to measure the distance of the band bands, and then uh, if you manage to visualize this with numbers, then you can plot it on a on a bar chart, something like that, which might be able to help you and to again to to measure somehow volatility. However, if you uh, if you decide to to get rid of the bands, then you will not be able to tell when the price is hitting the upper or the lower band. So if you don't like the bands, maybe you can simply replace the Bollinger Band indicator with another volatility indicator, like the average true range, for example. Uh, Andre is asking, yes, sorry, your explanation of how standard deviation is measured. Uh, is this uh, done in FIPS? Uh, well, uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the measurement is done. Uh, uh, I believe the measurement is done taking into consideration the price, the value, I mean, the number of the price, which, uh, which definitely, which yes, it, it means the, the pips. As far as I know, this is how it works. But uh, even uh, if it's not, because you can consider it to take like the price, and you can also configure it to take into consideration the percentage move. It is still the same thing because a price move, price A to price B, is still like in percentage, it's expressed exactly the same way. So basically, in this case, I don't think it matters which one of these two is. All right, guys, feel free to ask any other questions. Uh, if, if you are, oh, all right, there you go. Uh, Andre is asking, what time frames do you recommend for Bollinger Bands? Um, <laughs> Fabio says, my laptop is with low battery. Get a charger, man. <laughs> Get a charger. Uh, all right. So what time frames do I recommend? In my opinion, uh, the Bollinger Band indicator it will be like more suitable for either smaller or mid-range time frames. Uh, the reason for this is that, uh, for example, for small time frames, I'm referring to day trading. The reason for this is that during the day, you have like high volatility periods related to a forex pair and low volatility periods. And this is most likely related to, to when a certain market is open and closed and when the market overlaps or like, uh, are happening because when you have a market overlap then the volatility is likely to be very high due to the trading volumes due to the high trading volumes then this uh, is likely to lead to expansion in the bollinger bands and eventual potential like trending market which is what we're looking for uh, if you're trading like a middle like a middle chart sizes it, it's still like interim like in a month uh, it, it, it is still like it still applies good in my opinion if up to like one hour chart uh, or 30 minute chart or something like that something like uh, for let's say for a swing trade however for like long term trading like position trading i don't think like the bollinger band indicator could be that helpful i mean it could be helpful indeed i mean whenever you have an indicator this could also be a plus for you however um if, if you want to use the Bollinger Band indicator on a big chart, then it is very likely to give you indication about something big that is happening related to a particular uh, economy. For example, let's say, uh, let's say Russia. Uh, why am I saying Russia? Because Russian ruble has been crazy recently. So I'm going to open you the Russian ruble chart. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me find it just real quick. Take a look. So what's going to happen when I plot the Bollinger Band indicator? Trend, Bollinger Bands. Voila. Take a look. We have like a very, very big increase of volatility over here. What is the reason for this? It was the reason. The reason for this was the conflict with uh, Ukraine when Russia took a lot of sanctions from the European Union for like taking the Crimea Peninsula and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of sanctions from the, the United Nations as well as from the European Union. Uh, well, this led, these sanctions led to like a drastic drop in the Russian ruble. So, I mean, this increased volatility because there were a lot of short sellers over here. 
a lot of people like wanted to get rid of the ruble because uh, it started dropping in value so volatility like increased because a lot of trading volumes uh appeared so to prove my point i'm gonna open the the volume indicator over here a uh, volume there you go take a look i mean the the differences are obvious normal market no war no stuff and then suddenly conflicts start to arise within the economy uh the price starts hitting the upper band but i mean this is like a very very long term this is the monthly chart each of these candles equal to one month let's check the daily now take a look it's still like forecasts a big trend but i mean uh, the price is hitting the upper band over here the expansion comes here volumes increase suddenly the price changes its direction and then you would be forced to close here eventually so I mean, not that this is a small trade, but it may be taking too much of a time, that trade. So it, it is up to you. In my opinion, Bollinger Band is best for day trading, uh, if you're doing day trading. However, it could also be applied successfully to middle range trading, like swing trading, and even on like the biggest charts, but I'm not sure if, if it works because uh, like uh, the overall economic or political sentiment changes real quick due to uh due to announcements releases meetings and so on and so forth so whenever a forex pair is like uh, very volatile like during a month then next month it could get extremely quiet same as it happened here it was like extremely quiet and then suddenly bam that's how it works and each of these candles equal to one week i don't know this is up to you all right guys so now i would like to encourage you to ask me any more questions if you have any other i uh, would love to respond i know that some of the stuff that i'm talking are very com confusing but uh understand that in forex trading it is, it is like very hard to i mean it, it's not very hard it's impossible to say something is exactly like this because forex trading is not like a, it's not a certain like uh uh how do you call this i forgot the word uh it's not a, like a, an accurate a certain science you know that's not uh that's not math that's not math for like fifth grade you know something like uh <laughs> uh like square root of nine to equal three you know this is not a a, a, a certain hundred percent certain like uh, science it is a it is a game of probability for sure and whatever is uh happening today is is there is a very decent chance that it will not happen tomorrow and it will not work tomorrow this is why every forex trader needs to be flexible with his strategy or with his like for example forex robot which is the reason why you need to constantly optimize your trading strategy or to optimize your expert advisors and so on and so forth all right guys well let me turn on my camera again all right i think you're able to see me again i was standing like for one whole hour that's a good thing that's why i got this standing desk because it's awesome all right well thank you very much for uh being uh for attending this webinar it was a great pleasure for me to do it for you again i would like to introduce myself i'm damian from forexbolt.com and today i did a webinar for you uh on bollinger bands indicator and the power of volatility because volatility is very often related to trending situations on the chart uh what else uh, do i have for you yeah i already told you about the live analysis session that is coming on friday in 8 a.m new york time which responds to 1 p.m london time i think uh also this webinar is being recorded so you will be able to watch it on replay if you're under the trader uh, membership plan you can find it uh, maybe tomorrow it will be uploaded you can find it by typing in www.forexbowl.com slash webinars and then like picking up the webinar you want including this one which is going to be at the top all right thank you very much for watching again guys it was a pleasure for me to conduct this webinar uh, i wish you a great trading week and uh, see you on friday when i'm going to do a live analysis session Bye-bye.